Hi there, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah, and it's been a minute, hasn't it? Um, all of my best laid plans to do monthly videos did not happen this summer, but that's okay, we're back. And I actually have a ton of ideas for videos, so I'm hoping to record a few uh, in October, and I'll uh, be publishing those over the next couple of months. So stay tuned for updates on things I've been knitting and a pattern review um, and some other stuff. Uh, but today, because it's sort of timely um, into thinking about gift giving for the holiday season, I wanted to review the Diamine Inkvent calendar. This thing. Um, so if you are a fountain pen enthusiast, you've probably heard of the Diamine Inkvent calendar. Um, as the name implies, it is an advent calendar where you get a different bottle of ink for each of the 25 days. Um, this thing has been around for a number of years, but I just got into fountain pens last year in 2022. Um, so I had never seen this before until I requested it as a holiday gift and my family generously got it for me. Um, and it is a cool gift. Like it's a fun um, package. Of, it's a fun experience to go through and open each bottle uh, as, as the days progress. All of the bottles are sort of seasonally named. And um, so this one is called Celebration. It's a nice bright red. Um, Memory Lane is a soft purple color. We have um, Three Kings here, which is a nice deep gold. I'm not going to take you through the whole thing because there are plenty of videos where people, you know, make a video every day and do a sample writing test and all of that. So you can find that online already. What I want to talk about today is just my experience using the Inkvent calendar for the last nine or so months, um, how I've liked it, and whether or not I'd recommend it as a gift for someone in your life or for yourself. I think the biggest plus of this is the experience of getting to open an ink every day and to get a good sampling of inks. Um, I got several, uh, several oranges, a couple of reds, a number of purples, a lot of blues, several different shades of green, um, including some cool like sort of olive -y green um, shades and things like that. So I think there's a very good range of colors in this set and probably something for everybody. Now, if you don't like a lot of different colors, if you only like to you know, work with maybe um, a couple of different uh, colors in your writing, then you might end up with a lot of colors that you're not gonna use. So that's one thing to think about. Um, something else to think about is the effect or the add-ons to the ink. So by that, um, what I mean is that a, a number of these inks have properties. So they have what's called sheen, where the ink goes down on the paper and as it dries, it sort of pools and puddles in an interesting way. And so you get gradations of a tone or you might even get multiple tones. Um, my favorite example of this one is Arctic Blast. And this one has a sort of cobalt blue primary tone with red undertones. And it's really, really cool the way that shows up when you're writing with it and after the ink has dried. So I like Sheen a lot. Um, the other effect that they put in about half of the colors though is called shimmer or chameleon. Um, and these are two types of sparkly stuff. It's actually a, a, a solid substance that they mix in with the ink. And um, I think the shimmer is sort of silver toned and then the chameleon is more gold toned or it might even be um, something that picks up the color of the ink that it's embedded in. So it sort of changes color depending on which ink it's with. Um, it's an interesting effect. It makes a sparkly ink, which in theory is really cool. Um, however, in practice, I really didn't like the shimmer and the chameleon because they are chunks of solid matter, they're mica or something like that, embedded in the ink, and they settle in the pen and they create clogs. So um, because I've been keeping a daily journal and also using these for correspondence, you know, I like to sit down to a writing session and just be able to write uninterrupted. And with the sparkle pens, I really found that I had to be careful. I had to be constantly rotating my pen while I was writing. And even doing that, sometimes I would get clogs in my pen and I would have to stop and clear that out or switch pens and switch to a different ink altogether, um, which I just didn't like doing it. It made 
the writing experience a little bit more anxiety laden and just not as fun. Um, now I did come up with a solution for that. So after um, these nine months of not really enjoying writing with about half the inks that were in this set, I was trying to think of what I could do to salvage the ink. Um, I didn't want to just throw it all away, um, but get the sparkle out. And I realized that a coffee filter was perfectly fine enough to let the ink pass through and um, yet block all of the shimmer. So you can see, um, this is one of the coffee filters, and you can see some of the sparkles were still stuck to the front of that right in here. So, um, so this did a great job. And what was interesting about this process is that, as you can see here, um, it kind of made a cool, a cool item in, in of itself. So I got some accidental artwork out of the process of filtering all of these inks. Um, I think there were 13 colors that had either shimmer or um, the chameleon effect, and I, I filtered all the ones that I had left. I had given a couple away to other ink-loving friends as gifts, um, but but I thought this was pretty cool. And you can see some of these had the, um, the shading uh, aspect that I was mentioning before, the sheen aspect, so that the color breaks, and then you get kind of a neat effect around the edge. And some of them had a more dramatic effect than others. This one had quite a bit. Um, this is probably my favorite, the, the olive with the, the yellows in it. And again, you can see some sparkle there in the middle of the page. And then you get some very moody sort of ones. So dark red, purple and pink. And so I was trying to think of what to do with these um, because you know, I think they're neat. So I think either ornaments, I might just um, cut them out and hang them up. I, I might laminate them to make them last a little bit longer and also, um, you know, block the sparkle from dropping off as it's dried. Or maybe a mobile, um, you know, cutting them all out and then making a mobile out of them, something like that. So um, not a difficult project, and you know we had a ton of extra coffee filters. We use a reusable coffee filter in our coffee machine, so I just had these extra filters laying around from a long time ago. So that was a good use for that, and it it helped me salvage, you know, like I said, about half the pack um, of the Diamond Inkvin calendar. Now the other thing that I had a problem with with the Inkvin calendar was that a lot of the tones are very light. And I find that they're a little bit too light to write with. So you can see here some of these lighter shades. Um, and they just don't show up on the paper very well, especially when, like me, uh, you write with a very fine pen. Um, so I, I liked these um, to some degree. I'm trying to find a sample page here for you. Um, so here's Olive Swirl, for example. And you can see at the top, part of this page, it's pretty light up here at the top. And then I tried to blend it with black down here, but it kept separating um, because I didn't use the same brand of black. I used a different brand. So those two inks didn't really want to go together. Um, same thing, this is Deck the Halls, and you might even be able to pick up some of the glitter in here. This was a glittery one that I filtered. And this one's a little bit better, but it's still kind of on the light side. I like a rather saturated um, color. It's also showing up darker on my camera than it is in, in person here. Here's another one that was very light. It's called Bliss. And it's just too light. It's too light for me. Even something like this Cardinal, which should be very saturated, down here with the dip pen, where you have a lot of ink coming down on the paper, it's good. But up here, this is actually what it's like inside of a, a fine weight. Um, an extra fine nib. And again, it's just not showing up as dark on the page as I would like. I have to kind of strain it tr to read it, and I didn't want to do that. Um, so the way I'm going to work around this is I've, I ordered myself a 30 mil of Diamine Black. Um, it's not this bottle, but it's, it's their own uh, black ink. Not very expensive. And um, just a couple of drops I found per bottle is enough to darken it up without really affecting the color. It does shift the color just a little bit and changes it slightly, but a, a few drops used sparingly is enough to darken it up without you know, ruining the color or dramatically uh, shifting it.
So that seems to be, you know, a decent compromise. But of course, I had to buy an extra product to make that work for me. Um, another thing I've been having fun with, though, is to make custom colors. So here's a custom color. It's sort of a um, sea foam teal kind of color. And it's a little bit different than anything that was in the kit originally. Um, but I blended Bliss, Apple Teeny, and Twilight and um, got this, this more saturated color. So Bliss and Apple Teeny were both almost neon colors originally, but then by blending them with a darker shade, um, I was able to get something that goes down on the paper and that I, is still very legible. Um, in terms of the cost, um, last year, I believe the Diamine Ink Vent Calendar um, was priced at $115 US, and that got you the 25 bottles of ink. The small ones for most of the days, these are 12 mil, and then you get one large one on the 25th, and that's a full 30 mil bottle. Um, so I did the math on that, and that's 318 milliliters. And if you divide that out by how many it is equivalent in the normal di diamine bottle size, it's about 10 and a half of these. So the math comes out to um, a little bit more expensive with the Inkman calendar. And that's probably due to all the extra packaging. You have to think about, you know, 10 of this kind of bottle versus 24 of these plus the nice box. The custom box. Um, I think that's probably why it's a bit more expensive, but these guys individually go for eight to ten dollars now, so you'd be looking at eighty to a hundred dollars versus the hundred and fifteen, and then this year's calendar, the 2023 calendar, is even more expensive. It's a hundred and thirty dollars, so I'm not sure that's that's, you know, if you got ten of these at eight dollars a piece versus a hundred and thirty dollars, um, you would get more variety in the Inkvent calendar. You would get 15 more colors, um, but it's also $50 more. So is that worth it? I think it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for variety, you don't mind light colored inks, and you don't mind sparkle, or you really enjoy sparkle, I think it could be a very cool gift. But if the person you're shopping for doesn't like sparkly inks and finds that they clog their pens or, or create problems for them, or if they like really dark colors like I do, I'm not sure it's the best choice. I would probably instead pick out five or six of the full-size bottles and give that as a little, you know, sampler kit to the person um, instead. Or if they, you know, really just, they like purple and blue and they don't really write with anything else, then you could get them, you know, a series of purple and blue inks or something like that in their favorite colors. So is it worth it? Is it a great gift? It's certainly not a perfect fit for everybody, but most gifts aren't. I think it's a neat idea, and again, it's a very fun one to give and receive and go through and sample all the colors, um, but in terms of longevity and ease of use, it may not be for everybody. So that is my review of the Inkvent calendar. I hope you found that helpful. Let me know if you've tried this calendar. Um, if so, what did you like about it, or what did you not like about it? Have you gotten sampler packs from other companies, and what did you think of those? Um, I don't think anybody does a full 25-day advent thing, but um, companies like Robert Oster, for example, do like six packs of special edition colors and things like that. So there are other companies that do sampler packs, and I'm just curious which other ones you've enjoyed. Um, if you're into fountain pens or if you're into calligraphy, let me know in the comments. Um, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll be back before too long with another video. Take care.